Would you all join me in standing to your feet? We're gonna read God's word together today. And uh, I, my prayer today is that you will really absorb these words that I'm gonna share today, that you wouldn't uh, take them lightly or just treat this as another Sunday, but that you would really try to get a hold of God's vision for your life and for our church this morning, that you'd really just ask God to help you soak it in today. I'm reading from Ezekiel chapter 47, and this is a beautiful vision of what the church is to be like. Ezekiel says, the man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced the east. The water coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar, it was coming down from the altar, south of the altar. Then he brought me uh, through the north gate and led me around outside to the outer gate facing the east. Notice the east keeps coming up in this passage. And water was trickling from the south side. As a man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits and led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. It's gone from the ankle to the knees. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river. It was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? I wanna ask you, Dream City Church, do you see this? Do you see what's happening in the story? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters into the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Something is flowing into something that's dead because it has too much salt and it's making it fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever this river flows. There will be a large number of fish because the water flows there and makes the salt waters fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. So where this river flows, everything will live. So where this river flows, everything will live. I wanna speak on the subject this morning of a river runs through it. A river runs through it. Now I'm sad that Hollywood stole my title, but you get the idea. A river runs through it. Father, I pray you would touch the hearts of your people today. Touch your messenger so that this message can be what you intend it to be, Lord, that this message would bring forth change in the life of your people. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. You may be seated. So this prophet of God named Ezekiel is given a vision from God where God allows him to see into the future a day where water is flowing out from the temple, flowing all the way down like a river into the Dead Sea, that place where nothing can live because there's too much salt in it. Nothing can live in the Dead Sea. The Old Testament temple in Jerusalem was the highest location in Israel, while the Dead Sea is the lowest elevation on planet Earth. And Ezekiel is seeing a vision of the day where God has restored the temple and life-giving water is flowing out of the temple down to the Dead Sea, bringing life to the Dead Sea. Let me put it this way. When water flows out of the house of God, dead things begin to live again. Let me say it again. When water begins to flow from this house, dead things around us begin to live again. Now we know the ultimate fulfillment of this vision is given to us in Revelation chapter 22, where John the Revelator describes how things are going to be on planet Earth after Christ returns. He says in verse one, the angel showed me the river of water of life flowing from the throne of God on each side of the rivers to the tree of life and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. One day, a river is gonna flow from the throne of almighty God into this world, bringing healing to all the nations of this earth. And while we are too long for that day and hasten that day, this vision that Ezekiel saw 
is for our day. It's for the church to model today, this church and every church. So the question is, what is happening in Ezekiel that we are supposed to model as a church? Well, notice verse one says, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple and I saw water coming from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. Verse two says the temple was facing the east. Verse eight says water flows toward the eastern region. Whenever you see an emphasis on the word east in the Old Testament, it always represents a movement away from God. A movement away from God. When Cain wanted to get away from God, the Bible says that he went east, he went away from God. When God scattered all the people of the Tower of Babel, the Bible says that Nimrod gathered all the people and they went east, they went away from God. You see, when, 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 when we, we live in a nation right now that's gone east, we live in a world right now that's gone away from God and this east, eastern movement is called postmodernism. It's an attitude that completely dismisses God. Our world says, God, you are nice, but you're just not necessary. God, you may be cool, but you're not crucial. You may be real, God, but you're not relevant to my life. So go east, young man. Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Get a good secular education, you know. Dig for yourself because, you know, go to church on Sunday and give God a nod if you must. But go east, young man. Because God is nice, but he's not necessary. Because now we have science and technology. You know, you heard the story of the postmodern scientist who said, God, if you really are there, I want you to know something. We really don't need you anymore. Because now we can create life ourselves. And we, we can take DNA and blueprint it out and we can create life all by ourselves. So God, you're nice, but you're not necessary anymore. We just don't need you. We can create life ourselves. A voice from heaven rang out and said, is that so? You can create life? Really? You, you can make life? Let me see you do that. The man said, okay, I will. And he reached down to grab some dirt from the ground because all you are, you understand, is dirt, right? You're matter. You're going back to the earth one day. He grabbed some dirt and God said, ah. Uh, get your own dirt. <laughs> you see that? That's a snapshot of the postmodern deception. It's been duped into believing that you, you can live independent of God by, while still depending on God for our very existence. Ezekiel is seeing a vision of a world that's gone east. He's seeing our day right now, a world going away from God. And verse one says, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. This is the house of God. This is where you're sitting right now. And I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. The water was coming down with, from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. Ezekiel, understand, he's seeing this vision of water gushing forth from the house of God. Water is gushing forth from every entrance and exit of the sanctuary. Water in the Bible refers to the giving of life. And the giving of life is connected to the work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John chapter 7 and verse 38, whoever believes in me, rivers of water will flow from within them. By this he meant the Spirit. The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 3, the Spirit gives life. Now, friends, look at me. In order for us to flow water out of this place, we must first have water in this place. In order for life to flow out of the sanctuary, it must be filled with people in the sanctuary who possess life. How are we gonna help all those people outside this church who have gone east if we are not alive ourselves? I was thinking about this this past week. There are over 300,000 churches in America. How can we have all these churches with all these preachers and all these people sitting in chairs and all these programs and all these ministries and still have the mess that we have today? You know what the problem is? There's no water in the sanctuary or we need more water in the sanctuary. If we want transformation in society, we must first have transformation sitting in the seats of our churches. If you wanna change culture, 
we gotta have changed people in the church. I'm talking about the refreshing waters of the Holy Spirit flowing in our lives through this church, out the doors of the church, into the community to bring life to those things which are dead. That's the hope of the church. How can we expect for water to flow down Cave Creek Road if it can't flow down these aisles? If Jesus isn't the answer in here among us, those of us who know him, how can he be the answer out there among those who don't know him? If our view of God is he's a 90 pound weakling that can't address my needs, then he's gonna be anemic to people out there. What we need in this church and every church in America is a renewal of thirst for the refreshing waters of the Holy Spirit to flow through this place because when we're full of the Spirit, we're full of life. We're full of light. You know, in order for a light bulb to light up a room, first it has to have electricity filling the bulb. And then the bulb can light up the whole room. And if the church is gonna bring light and healing to our culture and community, it must first have the light inside of it, the spirit inside of it. And Ezekiel, in his vision, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, he sees the vision of you. (laughs) He sees you sitting in this church. He sees a house full of water full of life, full of the spirit that flows out of this sanctuary into the dead places around us and brings life. Now, here's a question. Why don't we see this water flowing out of most churches in America today, changing the culture around them? 300,000 churches in America. I mean, that's, that's you know, tens of thousands of churches in every state. Something's broken. Something's missing. Why aren't the churches changing the culture around them? I'll tell you why, friends. Because as the church has gone eastward, as the world's gone eastward, the church has followed them. We don't just have, you know, we don't just have eastward uh, sinners. We have eastward saints who just go with the world. See, if this podium is God and this is the church, we're trying to get as close to God as we can. And here's the world. Okay, we keep our distance from the world. We won't go this way, but as the world gets further from God, we keep our distance from the world, but get further away from God. And that's a picture of what's happened in the American church today. Think about this, friends, 320,000 churches in America. And I read this week that only 12 to 15,000 of those churches adhere to a biblical worldview with regard to things like the sanctity of life, the protection of the unborn, with regard to things like the definition, the biblical definition of a marriage, which is between a man and a woman, Amen. with regard to things like the, the, the identity of a, the biological identity of a man and a woman. Amen. Today, it's, not, it's very common to see uh, rainbow flags in churches all across America. And this explains why, generally speaking, the American church is anemic. And the reason the church is anemic is because we don't have enough Christians in the churches who have submitted themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. The Lordship of Jesus Christ. Too many Christians today treat God like a spare tire. Most of us have spare tires in our trunk. And the spare is there for emergencies. In case you have a flat tire. We rarely think about the spare tire until we need it. Because we don't wanna be caught on a dark road somewhere out in the country with a flat tire. So we keep it in the trunk just in case. Some of us have spare God in the trunk of our lives just in case life goes flat. I got someone to lean back on, but it's just nice that he's around, but he's not really necessary. He's nice, but he's not necessary for everyday living. Friends, I wanna tell you, you're not gonna impact the world that way. The Lordship of Jesus Christ is what brings water in the sanctuary because to be full of the Spirit of God is to be submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. It's called discipling the church. What is a disciple of Jesus? Catch this now. 
a disciple of Jesus is someone who brings all of their life into conformity to Jesus Christ. It's someone who says, my answer to every subject matter on this planet is what did Jesus say? Not what the world says, not what my friends say, not what social media says. What does Jesus say? Ezekiel said in this passage, this whole thing begins at the altar. The water began to flow from the altar. Read it. What's an altar? An altar is a place where you sacrifice stuff. It's a place where things in our life go to die. And when a church commits itself to bringing their whole lives into conformity to Jesus Christ, the water begins to flow in your life, in my life, and in this church, and it flows out the doors into the community. We become thick with the Holy Spirit when we practice the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I'm saying that if we want this life-giving water of God to flow from the sanctuary, I'm saying that we gotta be thick with the Holy Spirit ourselves. Man, when you look at the first church in the book of Acts, they were thick with the Spirit. You know why? Because they were living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, because they lived under the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit came like a rushing, mighty wind, and it filled the area where they were worshiping. In other words, the supernatural showed up when they were living under the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So let me just give you the principle. The supernatural in this church and other churches will only show up according to our level of filling, our water level. If our water level is low, the presence of the supernatural will be low. If our water level is high, the presence of the supernatural will be high in this house. Friends, I don't know about you, I am just so sick and tired of just playing church. I'm just so sick and tired of just going through the motions. I want water to flow out of this dream city house. I want the people of Phoenix and Scottsdale and Glendale and Short Creek and Sholo and Long Beach and, and, and Omaha, Nebraska and McAllister and Whittier, California. I want them to be able to say something is happening in that house. Life is emanating from that place. Refreshing waters of God are flowing eastward and, and things are changing. Culture is changing. Our city is changing. Our state is changing. Because refreshing waters are flowing. Like a sink overflowing with water. It cannot be stopped. It just goes everywhere. You can't contain it. Look, I don't want to be a church that just talks a good game. I don't want to be a church to you who just quotes scripture. The Lord said this and the Lord said that. Let me recall this from my memory. Look, we need to quote scripture. We need to memorize scripture, but we don't want to be a church that just talks about what God's word says. We want the experience of that truth to be lived out in the life of this house because the water level is so high we can't contain it. It goes out the doors into the communities and brings life to dead things. It's the difference between between hearing a doctor saying, you're pregnant, and then seeing the ultrasound of the baby, the picture, right? One sounds really good, but to see it, that's a whole new level. As your pastor, listen, as your pastor, I don't want you just to come to service after service after service and hear God's word preached over and over and just love the sound of it. I want you to go to a whole new level in your life. I want you to see the picture of God being formed in your life. I want you to experience the presence of God in your life so you can live it outside these walls and be the water of God to the community. Notice the water flowed from the sanctuary, which means it flowed out of their worship. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 14, verse 17, God says, if any of the families on this earth won't worship the king, the Lord, then the rain, there's that word again, water, the spirit, the life will not fall on them. What am I talking about today? I'm talking about getting real. I'm talking about a real, authentic, God-honoring, God-following, submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. That's what brings the water. That's what brings the Spirit. 
as I just get ready to land this plane here today, and we're gonna pray together. I was thinking this week about our church. God has brought us a mighty long way, Dream City Church, amen? I mean, going back 100 years ago, we started here in this little church. A Native American pastor birthed this church back in 1923. But there was a river going through it. We didn't have much money, didn't have many things, but there was a river flowing through it. God bless the church. And we bought a new piece of property down in, on 3rd Street in Thomas, the First Assembly of God. Many, some of you were there, not as many as there used to be, but some of you were there. <laughs> and again, they only had 200 people when dad came, but what they had was a spirit. The, the water started gushing out. The river was flowing through it. And then in 1983 or 84, we bought the property up here on Cave Creek Road, 72 acres of land. This church built that building, borrowed money to buy the building. I think Jimmy Carter was the president. There was 20, the interest rate was 22% back then. And we complain these days, my, we, the staff and my dad, 6% interest, that's terrible. He says, you pansies, I built this church when it was 22% interest. Like that's something to be proud of or something, you know. <laughs> From there, the campus began to grow. The river continued to flow. And we had new buildings begin to spread up on the campus of our church, youth buildings and children's buildings. From there, we wanted to water not just to be caught up in the church, but we wanted to reach out, let the water flow outside this place. So we bought the Dream Center downtown Phoenix, the Embassy Suites Hotel that's converted into the Phoenix Dream Center. This church saw there were hungry people all around this campus, so we bought the property next door, Mom's Pantry, and we provided food for hundreds of thousands of people every year through our food distribution center. The river continued to flow. We went to Scottsdale and bought a beautiful 27-acre acre campus in Scottsdale. Then we went to Glendale and bought another campus, 47-acre campus out there. Then Colorado City, up where Warren Jeffs was, you know, practiced that evil polygamy. And by the way, that city is changing rapidly. Pretty soon, it's not going to be called Colorado City. It's going to be Dream City, amen, because it's changing out there for the glory of God. Then we went to Sholo planted a church up there with, from nothing. They're running between five and, hundred, five and 600 people every weekend in Sholo now. God's doing a great thing. Then to Omaha, go real fast. Then to McAllister, Oklahoma. Then to Whittier, California and Long Beach, California. And now Angel, she's buying homes up in the Sholo area to provide housing for these young ladies who don't wanna have an abortion, but they have no support. They can come into these homes. They can have their baby and <laughs> glorify God by valuing life. And now we're starting two new campuses, Easter, on the Native American Reservation. I just wanna say this to you, church. To God be the glory for all that he has done. But here's the point I wanna make. All these things don't mean a hill of beans if there's no water. They mean, the only reason the temple had value was because the glory of God was there. The glory of God is what makes the temple alive and full of water. And the only way we can get the glory of God in the house of God is to have people in the seats who have submitted themselves to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. To be filled with the fire of God is to be filled with the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Man, what good is a football team that has nice uniforms, a brand new stadium, but they lose all the time? They're just good looking losers. They're, they're the Cardinals, amen, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> what good is a nice church with beautiful campuses, wonderful people, great programs, dream centers, if there's no life? if there's no energy, if there's no water flowing in the house. Verse nine tells us what happens when this water begins to flow. This is where things get exciting, we're almost done. 
Swarms of living creatures will live wherever this river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Wow. Where things were not fresh, they become fresh because of the purity of the water flowing from the house of God makes things fresh. It infiltrates the Dead Sea and makes the water fresh. Verse 12, fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. The leaves will not wither, nor will the fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Ezekiel says, when the water flows from the sanctuary, life will begin to breed around this church where death used to rule. And that's what we're after. Okay, and listen. What I'm, what I'm talking about today as your pastor, listen carefully, has nothing to do with, with, with what's happening in Washington, D.C. This has nothing to do with what the politicians are doing. And I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. God does not ride on the backs of donkeys or elephants. Come on, somebody. Because when the Republicans were in charge, it was a mess too. All right? This has everything to do, listen, with what's happening here in this sanctuary. This house, listen, this house must be alive. I'm gonna try it again. This house must be alive, making this place the best place to raise a family, to live your life, because there's so much water flowing out of this house and in this house, changing our lives and changing the community around us so that we impact our world. Amen. Some of you are getting it this morning. Amen. In the Old Testament, book of Leviticus, when they had something called the Day of Atonement, God would restore the land. He would set the slaves free and he'd remove the debt. In other words, when people got right with God, listen, when they met at the Day of Atonement, there would be transformation in society. When the people would, when the, when the sanctuary would come alive, life showed up everywhere in the community. Oh, friends, that's why we're going to the Native American communities. Everyone's given up on the Native American communities. They have tried, they've boarded up their churches, and they have left. And that's why we're going in there. Because we are a church who was called by God to not just hoard the waters of God, but to open the doors and let it spill out to affect the lives, to impact the lives of hurting people, to bring life where there is death. This is why we're building our children's facilities out here. Today is Kingdom Builder Commitment Sunday. And we have $3 million already raised for our new children's building. We need $10 million. If we can get to $7 million, we'll break ground. Trust God for the rest. Amen. But it's going to take a brand new level of commitment. This is why we rescue young boys and girls from human sex trafficking. That's why we do what we're doing. It's why we provide housing and programs at our dream center for, for people who've kind of lost their way. We don't believe in getting handouts in this church. We believe in getting hand ups in this church to help them and show them that God has a plan for their life. We want the people in our community to say there is water coming out of that church. Life-giving, life-changing water. You know, when you light a fire in your fireplace, it's not just to heat the fireplace. You're trying to heat the whole room. And what I'm trying to do today, I'm preaching my heart out, I'm trying to get you to see that God wants to ignite a fire in your heart so you can take that fire outside of these walls and bring life and light and water to a parched and dying community. As we look at the proliferation of evil in our culture, we see our culture going east more and more all the time. Church, look, there is only, only one way to stop this. Only one way. And it's not through politics. We're, we have civics engagement and ministries here in the church, but politics are not the answer. The only way to stop it is there must be more water coming out of this place. That's it. 
there must be more water coming out of the sanctuary. And this is what happens when water begins to come out of the sanctuary. Verse three. He led me through the water that was ankle deep. I love this picture. Then verse four, it was knee deep. At the end of verse four, it says it was up to the waist. Verse five, now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was too deep. It was deep enough to even swim in it. This water is coming out of the sanctuary and it's gushing and it's gushing and it's gushing. It was ankle deep, then knee deep, then waist deep. Now you can swim in it. So much water is coming out. And he says that it became like the great sea, the Mediterranean Sea, where fish and creatures are swimming in it. There's life. Trees are growing up all around it. Friends, you talk about making an impact with your life. Listen now. You talk about giving value to your days and value to your work. You talk about giving your life to something that really matters. You talk about making an impact with your life. Listen, you, you measure the impact of a bomb by ground zero. Where the bomb hit then you measure the impact out from there, how far it can be felt. You can tell how spiritually alive a church is by the measuring from the impact how far out it could be felt. Right now, we are at ground zero. If you wanna know how big of a Holy Ghost bomb has hit this church, you measure the impact all around us in our city, in our state, in our nation today. I don't want it to be said that when we, when we leave this place, that we made a big impact, a big bomb, but nothing was felt. Nothing was shaken. Nothing was rattled or affected. I want our city to be impacted. I want our state to be impacted. I want our nation to be impacted. I want to impact the world. But friends, in order to do that, now listen, we got to have more people in our church who are submitted to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so that more water can flow out of this place, out of this house, to impact lives all around us. Look, why are you preaching like a crazy? I know I'm raising my, I sound like Biden out there. I said at a union address right now, just yelling everywhere. Like, at least I'm telling the truth, amen, for a good cause, amen. <laughs> that wasn't of the spirit, that was more of the flesh, but. But listen, friends, look at me now, I'm done. But as your pastor, I refuse to let us get stagnant. I, if you wanna be stagnant, just a casual Christian who just checks in, this is not sure for you. But if you wanna be a Christian who really wants impact with your life, but you don't want a stagnant church. We had, we had a, the Dead Sea was dead because it was stagnant, you see? There's no flow in or out. We don't need more dead churches. We need the water to flow in this church in greater measures to impact our world. Do you have any bowlers here today? Anybody like bowling? One, two. You can always tell, you, only a few. You can always tell a, a good bowler by their impact, right? A bowler can have beautiful, shiny shoes, beautiful, shiny ball, brand new, all polished up. He can have the right form and technique with just the right spin. And there's a place for shiny shoes and a shiny ball and the right technique. But if you have a shiny ball and shiny shoes and the right technique and you put it in the gutter, that's not impact. You can have scrubby shoes and a beat up ball and a horrible form, but if you're knocking down all 10 pins, then you are the man. Come on, somebody. You are the woman because that is what impact is all about. What good is a shiny church with shiny people if there's no impact? We are here to impact our city. We are here to impact our state. We are here to impact our world. That is our mission as a church, to disciple the church, to impact the world. So I'm inviting you today, listen, to make your life vision the vision of this church, or at least part of your life vision, that you would no longer, now, 
listen, you would no, no longer come on Sundays and just sit in your theater seat with your popcorn and ask, what's the, what's the show about today? But you would ask, you would say, I wanna be part of something that's life giving in, life receiving in, and then life giving out to change our world. I'm asking you today, will you please allow the Holy Spirit to create a fire in you so that you become part of the flow? So that through your time, talents, and through the unselfish generosity of your treasures, you will allow a river to run through your life to bring life to dead things. That is our dream. A river running through this house that goes east to make the dead things all around us come to life. Do you receive this word today? Amen. Would you all stand to your feet for a closing prayer? I'm gonna ask, please, no one leave the service. We are early today for a purpose. When you walked in here today, you received a magazine. By the way, if you didn't get a magazine, please stop and grab one on the way out. You talk about impact. Just read about what your church is doing. Just read about what happened in 2023. It'll blow your mind. I read this and I said to myself, it's impossible for us to exist. How do we pay for all this? But God is faithful, amen? And then read about where we're going in 2024. And I promise you, you'll say, I just really want to be a part of this because they're making a difference. They're impacting our city and state. So when you walk in here today, you receive one of these Kingdom Builder cards. And I think it's up on the screen behind me here. The print is kind of small. But what I'm asking you to do is take this card today and put your name on there and just write in there an amount that you're asking God to help you, to empower you to give over the course of the next nine months. Now, this is something that's above our regular tithe, our regular 10% that we bring in obedience to God every week. So if you're doing that already, you're eligible to become a kingdom builder now. This, this is what a kingdom builder does. As God blesses us and brings more seed to the sower, we sacrifice and give so that we can be water in the house and bring the gospel to our state. I'm asking you today to do something very special. Every age group can be a part of this. Anybody here have a bad Starbucks habit? If you have a, my dad's confessing right now. Okay, well, confession is good for the soul. Young people, listen to me. You, you, you spend 10, say, we'll just, you know, go low, $10 a week. That's $40 a month. That's what, five, five to $600 a year that you could give to something that's gonna outlast you. That you could give to something that's gonna be eternal. Think about that. It wouldn't hurt you to get off caffeine anyway. I can't live without caffeine. Well, God will help you. Amen. You, you can do it. By the way, when you say, I can't do that, that's a lie from Satan. And he will try to convince you there's things you cannot do. So don't follow that. But the, really, the only way this can happen, we got to raise another seven, uh, seven million dollars to get this thing built. And I believe that even this year coming up, we could break ground if, if we'd have 100% participation, however God is leading you to give. We're going to need some people to give $100,000. We're going to need some to give a quarter million dollars. We're going to need some young people to give $100. It's every, according to how we're blessed. And as we do that together, we are gonna bring refreshing waters to the next generation through this building that's built. We need it in America. We need it at our church. So I hope you'll do that. Our team is gonna be up here to pray with you afterward, but I, I feel like God is asking me to do something different right now. We didn't do this in the early service. There are people here today who you, you want to be this refreshing water that creates change in your family, in your business, outside these walls. And maybe you're wondering why I, I don't have that refreshing water inside of me. And the whole key is the Lordship of Jesus Christ. 
It's making this conscious decision. I'm not talking about perfection. We all make mistakes. Even my dad makes mistakes periodically, believe it or not. My mom's going. My dad's going. And that, that's why we have repentance. So on a day like this, we can get back on track once again and say, yeah, I want Jesus Christ to be the Lord of every decision I make in my life. So right now, I wanna pray for every person in this place who would just simply say, Luke, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the influence of social media. Maybe it's peer pressure. Maybe it's just being distracted. But I've gotten off course. And I wanna return Jesus Christ to his proper throne in my life today. I want him to be the Lord of my life, the king, the boss of my life, in every area of my life. Would you close your eyes and bow your heads all across this place? You say, Luke, that's me. I want water to flow through my life. Friends, it all begins in the house of God. You understand that, right? It all begins right here. Just raise your hand all across this place. I, I want to return to God. I want to return him to the rightful leader of my life. Father, I see all these hands that are lifted here today. I thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Lord, we want our lives to make an impact. We want our church to make an impact. But it all begins in the house of the Lord. It all begins by us making you the Lord of our life, every area of our life. I pray for every hand that's lifted here today, that right now, Lord, if you raise your hand, just say these words along with everybody else. Just say, Heavenly Father, today I choose to make you the Lord of my life, every area of my life. I bow before you today. You are King. You are my Savior. But you're also my Lord. I give my life to you fully. I am yours. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, when we leave this place, let's go out and live that way. You have the Holy Spirit as your helper to help you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He will prompt you. But you're going to see power flowing through your life starting today. And I'm very excited for you. How many are glad you came to God's house this morning? Amen. Our pastors are gonna come fill the front right now. And for those of you who are making your kingdom builder commitments today, would you bring those forward and allow our pastors to pray with you and your family? We wanna pray for your business. We wanna pray for your health. We wanna just pray for every area of your life because you're doing something special today. Maybe you didn't come prepared for this, but you wanna just fill out that card right now and be a kingdom builder. We love you all so much. Let's come now and allow us to pray with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.